here we are, New York City Pinball Championship, deciding who is ultimately the greatest in New York. A question long discussed by basically everyone. Yeah, we're at Sunshine Laundromat in Brooklyn, New York. It's the morning of January 19th, 2019. Everybody's coming in to warm up for the tournament. Tons of people ranked in the top 150, tons of players ranked in the top 1,000, almost everybody. There's a bunch of money up for stake this year. Anyone here can win it. Good morning, bro. Good morning, Francesco. Francesco's one of the tournament directors today, along with Greg Poverelli. The state championship is single elimination, 24 player tournament. The way it works is best out of seven, head to head. Every game matters. I love the format of the four out of seven match play because if you beat somebody four times, you've beaten them. You know, that's just how it is. Now, the International Flipper Pinball Association has this big North American Championship Series, and the winner from today here at the laundromat is going to go on to compete with all the other state and province winners in Las Vegas, Nevada to see who's the baddest pinball player on the continent. That's kind of getting ahead of things, so let's see if we know anybody here anyway. The great Dave Peller spectating today, a very bad dude, Jerry Bernard, the very funny Paul Karras. Also, Eric Sweetland and Benjamin Furigo were doing some podcasting from the event. Benjamin Furigo does the NYC Pin Pod. I listen to it every week because he talks about us <laughs> playing pinball. I think I get the appeal. Here's a sweet guy, CJ Smith. All time great, Steve Bowden. Perhaps gaining some vital information for later in the day. Yep. Here's Levy. And right around 10 o'clock, practice wrapped up and everybody gets together for one of those nice little meetings that you have before a tournament. Highest seed gets game choice or order in the first game, meaning I can choose to go first if I wanted to for some strange reason. Okay? So now I'm a pretty sharp cat, but most of the stuff ends up going way over my head and I end up tuning it out and having to ask questions later. Ghostbusters, or you could pick second, or you could pick first, any, whatever you want. Now the best part is when everybody gets into the weeds discussing some kind of edge case on a new game. What about shaking the ball out off of the thing to start multi -ball? That's okay? So here we burned about 10 minutes talking about Supreme and shaking out the locked ball and criminal intent and all of that. It was great. So if I lock the ball and I dream, and I don't want the next person to have the ball locked, I can correct That's the difference. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. There is a difference. There is a difference. That you cannot understand. But we're asking you what is the answer to that. If you want to be a douche, then you deserve All in all, a pretty rousing conversation to get the blood flowing in the morning. Tedious, but amusing. And we can move on to the business of game selection for the various head-to-head -head groups. Eric, you brag and chew. Eric. Yeah, I wouldn't have picked that, but whatever. Good luck, good luck, kill it. And we're off. First guys we're looking at here, Austin Smith and Jerry Bernard. Jerry eliminated Austin, and uh, he really blew up a game of Guardians of the Galaxy. Here's Mike Pantino and Ed Zeltman. I did sweep him, unfortunately, and I was hoping to go to seven games with him to make it a long thing for him, considering he drove, and now he's worried about getting back to the snowstorm. The most elite players tended to have a bye the first round. I'm just waiting on, I uh, actually have a, uh, a free round. Great to, to the area body play, bartending at the same time. The players with the bye, we tried to get as much practice in before the tournament started as we could. I tried to play on as many machines as I could, get a sense for what they're doing. Uh, but there's no substitute for actual competition. You said it, Sean. Here we see Paul Karras just eke it out against Anthony Lambos Jr. They went seven games. Here we got Howard Levine's first round. Played against Adam Kane. I've met Adam before, I knew he was a good player. We played five games, very, very stern heavy. Which isn't usually my style, but whatever. He beat me pretty hard, uh, four to one. A lot of my friends are still in it, so I'm still here hanging out and watching the competition. Here we've got Zachary Frey, who eliminated one of our great locals, Nint Hu. 
and then David Chewy Cologne, who survived against Eric Russell to go on to round two. Sorry I didn't get more of you guys playing. Levy Naaman versus Benjamin Furiga. Very proud to take him to seven games. He beat me handily on ACDC, also on Supreme. He really killed me. I chose that one and he really killed me there. Well, Levy just has that way, huh? Here we're starting to see all the scores coming in. Francesco's got to keep up with all this, and the eliminated players are starting to be cashed out. It's like any other first round in tournaments. You kind of feel out the machines. My buddy Nitsan Kabai eliminated Andy Cushman in the first round. Next round, I'm going to play Greg. I, I, I definitely want to be an upset in this situation. It'll be nice. Game over. It's round two, and oh shoot, the news media is showing up. Is it for uh, Steve and Paul? Jason! Game over. Yeah, time to get real meats. Second round, we got Francesco versus Adam Kane. Love both of these guys. Francesco managed to come out on top, though. CJ Smith let Mike Pantino off the hook in six games. That's sunshine, buddy. Here's a New Jersey State champion, Jason Soller, taking on Levy Naaman. Levy managed to prevail, but it took him seven games. And they had a pretty good one on Congo. Paul Karras was eliminated by Steve Bowden in round two. Steve's a pretty tough matchup though, right? Here we got Jerry Bernard and The Storm. My opponent Jerry Bernard's a really good player. He didn't drive all the way out here to lose. Like he was giving me his best. That was a battle. Uh, I, I won four to three. I came through when it mattered and that's really what it's all about. That's how it always happens. That Sean lives for a clutch situation. Now here's a couple of my main dudes, Needs and Goodbye and Greg Pavarelli. Greg's a real pillar of the community, you know? He runs the Wednesday night thing at Sunshine. Where'd we be without him? And Nitsan's just one of these guys that everybody becomes fast friends with. You know, like being nice is in his DNA or something. But sometimes being nice just isn't good enough. It was a bit of a heartbreak. Um... It was a tooth and nail match. It was really like through and through. One win for him, one win for me. And uh, we just kept going like that. You know, 1-0, one, 1-1, one, one, two, one, two, two. Oh, there's my money. <laughs> Give me my money. Yeah. Great job. Thank you, man. Great job. Thank you. Yeah, that's real sweet, but the train keeps rolling. We're in the top eight now. We're getting a little bit closer. We got me and Storm are the only two remaining New York State champions. You should expect, at this point in the tournament, almost every single game, if you don't blow it up, you're liable to take a loss. Sean won this tournament a couple of years ago, but it wasn't his day today. Same deal with CJ Smith. I took Steve Bowden to seven games, and I lost. When he got a billion, I'm Batman. And then CJ speculated about the outcome of the tournament. Bowden will be Greg. I think that Alberto will be Zen. Greg, Greg is playing good. And then Alberto will be Bowden? No, Bowden will win. I don't know. And then Al comes in and he says, Al, 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 Al. Yeah, as the day wears on, the vast majority of the people in the room are not finalists in the tournament. And it turns into a pretty nice hang for the rest of the day. You got a lot of eliminated players hanging out spectating because, you know, they got no place to be. I love all these people, and I have a great time when I come down here. Jake Fowler! Dave and Nint stuck around all day to show their support. What a couple of snuggle bucks. And Francesca was starting to hand out a lot of money. I think the tournament has been run very smooth. Yeah. Nothing, so. no big major stuff. Everything is working great. I gotta say thanks to Peter. Because he was here until 5.30 in the morning. Yeah, we're real lucky to have a place like Sunshine Laundromat to play. Peter's got a couple of really good dogs. One of them had a birthday today. Yeah, Sunshine's such a cool place, some people even bring their kids. This kid's got SCS fever. I'm glad I made the top eight where it's supposed to. And then I lost against uh, the one personally I think is going to win. Uh, which is Albert. 
So shoot, here we go into the semifinals. You got Alberto Santana against Nick Zendayas. Oh man, these guys are two of the giants of the Sunshine Laundromat scene. Gabriel Chazanoff stopped to do a little commentating for me. I mean, what? He's got two multi balls lit. He's 30 ahead, but he's player one. That's not much of a lead. You know Balbo can come back. And he lock it down with the casual multi ball. Meanwhile, Greg tries to fend off the out of towner, Steve Bowden. Thanks, Gabe. We have a similar style. I'm not at his level yet, but we like the same games. So I have to be careful against him because I know if I pick my strengths, I'm catering to him. And it looks like, okay, so I did win game, game three, so I'm up 2-1 right now. I was good playing him, so he's a great player. Let's see where he goes. Star Wars! And Greg's going to end up with a little action button hickey at the end of the night. And how'd it go with Alberto and Sen? I end up winning the sixth game, so that advances me to the finals. Nick Sandejas, great overall, great player. I'm still waiting for, like, the next rounds to really be intensive, but other than that, it's been great. Steve was pretty consistent on Batman tonight. It went to game seven, which is honestly a little bit better than I even expected. I, I knew I'd give him a run for it, but it, it could have been anybody's game there. And uh, we both played pretty strong. Uh, every game was won with like a very good score, more or less. He brought me to Batman 66. He had beat CJ the round before. So I think the final score was like 1.4 billion to 570. If there's gonna be a epic final, it should be the two best players in my opinion. So if I'm gonna lose, I want it to be the best and now I get to watch these guys. Yeah, heading into the final round. Steve Bowden versus Alberto Santana. Playing for kind of a big check. So they played Deadpool and then they moved on to Congo. Alberto won both of those games. So we're thinking, could he really make such quick work out of Steve? You know, never say never, but it's not likely. Now we go on to ACDC, and mm, again, Steve just couldn't quite do it. Then we went on to Batman. Batman had become kind of a trap that Steve had already caught a couple of guys in today. So could he do it once more with Alberto? Bloop, 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 calculating bonus. Yeah, you got it. Steve's back in the game. But Alberto's still just one win away from winning the championship. So could he do it on Iron Man? Uh, so then we all walk over to Scared Stiff, where Steve, having gotten some momentum on Batman and Iron Man, is going to try to pull even with Alberto. Going into ball two, Steve's a little bit behind, but not by much. And folks are really starting to crowd around for this one. After two balls, Steve wasn't able to do that much, so Alberto's got to come in here, ball three, being player one, and really put some distance between himself and Steve. Earlier, Benjamin had been sitting on my shoulders in a bikini top, and now he's just standing on a chair. So Steve starts out ball three in not such bad shape, especially considering that Alberto never really ran away with it. Yeah, and he even starts coughing multi-ball here. Mm, this is where Alberto starts to squirm, right? Yeah, and Steve's starting to tighten the gap here, and it's looking pretty good until... He's got a stuck ball. Now the issue here is they couldn't take the glass off without killing power to the flippers, so Steve's either got to free the ball himself, or they're just going to have to drain him out of multi-ball, and he can resume single ball play with the ball that was stuck up there. Steve chose the latter option, which was the smart play, considering how tight the tilts are. You gotta look uh, like uh, respectfully concerned or something, right? No? Yeah. I already know the odds. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be him. Alberto knows Steve can make a million points on Scared Stiff in his sleep. But, not tonight. So congratulations to Alberto and Steve and everyone else who worked their way into the championship. It was a great tournament. You know, they started out as me bartending and then started to play. Uh, the machines were playing pretty well. Everything was great. Got to play with all, with all my buddies. I had fun, lots of fun. Yeah, I had a lot of fun too. And I had a nice time hanging out with my pinball family. 
Even though I don't know every single one of the players today, they all seem like pretty sweet dudes. And maybe next year we'll have more than just dudes playing, you know? And everybody got doggy birthday cake. This shot's kind of played out, right? Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.